Hey YouTube, what's going on? Today we've got some more Highlander stuff to go over, and I can't wait to show you something from Highlander 2. Behold! My stuff! Okay, so, basically, if you've seen this channel, you've probably seen my Highlander stuff before. Um, the thing that gets the most views is the fact that I have a full sword made from one of these, which is, of course, the H1. The H1 is a cast from a screen-used piece from Highlander, the first film in 1984. This is based off the Ivory Mardo, and they sculpted with Bondo some dragon-type head thing onto it. And that was the iconic sword that most people remember from the Highlander. The sword does not make another appearance in the series. Every subsequent version of Connor's sword that we've seen has been a different sculpt. Um, the one that looks most similar to the H1 is actually the one from Endgame. The one from Endgame is a, a sword of the dragon with a new head sculpted onto it. And that was made by Mardo right around the time that Highlander the series was very popular. And that was actually the sword they used in the movie Endgame. So a lot of people have that sword because that is actually screen accurate to that film. And that you could get right through the Mardo catalog. They retail for about $250 now. It's got a really nice Suba. It's basically exactly what you see Christopher Lambert carrying in Endgame. Uh, in the second movie, that was kind of interesting because 99% of the movie, Connor doesn't use that sword. Um, in Highlander 3, he used the sword exclusively, but that was a completely new sculpt. 100%. Nothing was based on the Ivory Mardo. Um, it was all a brand new sculpt. Um, that one is the easiest to get a hold of a lineage piece for. But there was a brief appearance of the sword in Highlander 2. Highlander 2, at the very, very end sequence, when they're going in to blow up the shield, Ramirez magically has his sword again, and we don't know why. And he sticks it in the ground, and the weird spinning blade thingy destroys it, and, you know, some people have a full measure of life, and all that crap, and then... Magically, Connor has it for the last fight, and we don't know why, but it is actually a completely different sculpt. And when I say it's a different sculpt, I mean that it's one of these, recast, sanded the hell down, and then new details put in, and it's basically a new... Uh, a new handle, and so the Suka is referred to as the H2. It also had a much better weathering job and things like that on it, but I like the H2 because the change in the scales and everything is actually much more Japanese-looking than Chinese-looking. And so I feel that the H2 is the most Japanese-looking of all the versions of Connor's sword they've done, and that's why it's actually my favorite design. Highlander 2 is not my favorite movie. Not the Renegade version, not the original version, not the past, not Planet Zeist, none of it. I still watch it. It's fine. Um, but really it does not do anything for me in terms of being a movie. Michael Ironside, of course, is, uh, you know, chewing the scenery in every single scene he's in, but it's a rough watch. And, uh, since I have a lineage H1, I've looked very, very long and hard for an H2, and I've come across some here and there, never really got my hands on one, but I was lucky enough to pick one up from someone who had one in their collection from a long time ago, back when they used to make these and sell these. And it was a company that I respected and was very, very happy to get a hold of one of theirs. It was not a perfect casting. But, uh, this is well over a 10-year-old casting, but it is... Um, it's going to need a little bit of work. It's got some air bubbles in it. It's got a really nasty seam line on it, um, which is something that I never have. I don't have seam lines on anything that I do. I don't like that. There's a lot of little, like, micro-bubbles, if I just get my face out of the way. Little micro-bubbles here and there, and then if you get really in on the face, you can see, like, in the nose, there's some bubbles there, and on the horn, there's some bubbles there, because it's supposed to look like that, but it does not. So, there's a good amount of flashing, and there's a seam line in there. Um, so, this is kind of a weird cast. Now, the other thing you're going to notice is, look at the detail on that, compared to the H1. So... It's all gone! Um, and we don't know why it's all gone. Um, it's sanded, so it's not even if you look at it, it's just a shit cast. You can see that a lot of the relief 
is just completely gone. Like this bowl is not curved at all. It is flat. They've sanded this down a tremendous amount. And when you look at the dragon heads, you can tell that the taper and the thickness and everything is exact on these. They are the same casting. They're from the same original piece, the same wasting of the of the suka and everything. Well, I don't know if that was mineral spirits or what when the mold, but um, it just sanded down. There's there's nothing else to it. They sanded a ton of the bondo off and made a smoother, sleeker cast. And instead of just pushing in a pen and making all those divots, they went in and drew scales. And then the ridge line, they just went in and did a zzz, 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 and made it that. That's what it is. And I think it's a much sleeker looking design. I think it's much more plausible to something you might have seen out of Japan, uh, a feudal Japan sword, even though it's supposed to be a sword from BC. But they were based on feudal Japan swords. And I think this is closer to something you might see. Uh, and being that it's smoother, it, it's nicer in the hand. It, it fits in the grip better. So I liked the H2 in terms of what it was. I liked it. Um, so having one of these, which is over there, and it's freaking lovely, but it is a pain in the ass to hold. I don't like it. I, I'm not wielding it around. It's just a display piece. This is one that I think I would put on a con safe blade. And actually, it's actually mountable. Uh, this is one that I'd put on a con safe blade and kind of have around and putts around with. So um, I think I'm going to do that. But it's got to get some work done. So I've got to fill it. Like you see there, right in there, there's like a little bubble right there I got to deal with. There's a bunch of gaps and things like that. It needs some cleanup. It, 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 there's going to be some effort put in. So I'm going to have to clean this up and make another one. And then I'll be able to put it on, a, you know, whatever, a sword, um, a foam one or a wooden one or whatever. Maybe I'll even buy a blade and stick this one once I've finished it up and repainted it and stick that on one. I don't know. But this is a Lineage H2. And this is a Lineage H1. And here they are. And it used to be really hard. For anybody in the world to get a hold of one of these, unless you went through one person and it was obnoxious. But good news is, uh, it's a lot easier for people to get a hold of these now. And they're out there in the world. If you hunt for them, you can find them. If you have things that other people want, you can trade for them, which is what I tend to do. Um, benefits of being in the industry and, you know, the, the, the prop collecting and prop replicating industry is that you usually have something somebody else wants. So... That's how you get a hold of this stuff. And um, I will not be making these. I will not be doing these for other people. That's not really the point of this. This is for my personal collection. Um, I want to display this with my H1 over there. Um, I may even take these masters, once I've repainted this, and, and put them in a display or something like that. I don't see myself getting an H3. It's not my favorite sword. It looks extremely Chinese to me, and I just feel like it's too far in the other direction of what... Um, I thought Connor's sword should look like. I also hate the Suka in 3. It's so wonky and asymmetrical. Um, it's based off of a sketch that they had from the H2, and it's just garbage. Um, so I don't know that I'm going to get an H3. Sometimes it's referred to as an Albion, and there's there's all different names for them over there. I, and I can do a, a big, long run of all the different fan-made ones and who made them, and you know the Sal de Quilas and the Jose de Bragas and all the different ones that are out there, the Tom Malak sources and all that. Um, but the truth of the matter is, at this point, these two lineage pieces are pretty much the only Connors that I see myself having, unless I finally break down and get an endgame, which I might. I don't know. I, I could do that. But as rough and as, you know, gnarly as the H1 is, the H1 has that beautiful amount of detail into the hilt, whereas the H2, so much of that was lost, but there is something charismatic about that there's something like oh well years of gripping it and rubbing it and things like that made it waste away or has usage to it. it it seems somehow the h2 with the way they painted it and the way they aged it it just struck me as more of a oh that's really real you know i i like the way that looked um i'll probably just stick another h1 suba on it um i don't foresee myself going through and doing a, a different suba and matching the h2 exactly because like i said I'm not married to Highlander 2 as it appeared on screen. I just liked the way they changed the scales and smoothed out the mouth and everything. I just really thought it was a sleeker, cooler looking design. So I'll make my own version of what my favorite Connor would be with the H2. 
but I got to clean up, get rid of some seams and, and mold a new one. So this is not something that I'm going to do very quickly. It may take me a year or two before I actually get around to doing this. But I thought I'd show you guys how cool this is. Like, I finally got one. And that pretty much puts an end to my Highlander quest. I don't really foresee myself picking up anything else Highlander. Um, like I said, maybe if I find a good price, maybe like 150 I might pick up an Endgame Connor. Um, I'm not really interested. The only other thing that I want to do, um, which I'll show you guys, is I'm slowly building out my own um, H1 Saya. And so... I'm custom making one, so I do need to finish that up at some point, and that's probably the only other thing that I'm going to be finishing. But this is my finished H1, you know, all in there, and it's, again, it's a metal sword. Um, and I'll probably do... I'll probably do my H2 as a con safe and, and, and do that. And the only other thing that I need to finish is my S1, my, my Duncan Season 1. Um, which I do have. It's over there, and the blade's over there, and the Suba's over there somewhere. It's it's all in pieces. I'll get to it eventually. But, yeah, I'm really excited. This is really, really cool, and I know that not everybody has seen an H2 right next to an H1 with all the different um, detail loss and everything. And so I thought I'd just really quickly... Show you guys how different they are, and yet how similar they are, and how easy it is to spot an H1 versus something based on the Sword of the Dragon. So, for example, if I wanted to even pull... Let's pull... What's this guy here? So, here's a Duncan Sword of the Dragon. And when you look at that, compared to that... That is a very different animal. I mean, look at the size of Duncan. And so when you got a Sword of the Dragon that somebody's used this for and remade a head onto it or made a mentor or something like that or a Janai, it's freaking big. And so these are much smaller and sleeker. And that's cool, but it's also a bitch to mount because there's so little material to work with that depending on how thick you make the mountable piece for the tang, you could go through your mold. It, it's actually a bitch to mount these with a real blade. I've done two or three of them at this point, and I hated doing every single one of them. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm I'm none too thrilled about uh, trying to put this on a real sword. I, if I didn't do it with the master, I probably wouldn't do it at all. But doing a little dowel rod in for like a foam sword or something, much easier. But yeah, so that's what these are. These are very, very cool pieces. The H2 versus the H1. Oh, very, very cool. Very happy to have both in my collection now. And um, can't wait to uh, finally weather one up just the way I like it and make it look cool. And uh, yeah, have another sword on my, on my rack. So thanks for checking out yet another Highlander piece. Uh, super thrilled to have both lineage pieces in my collection. And if there's anything else that uh, you guys have questions about, want to see, want to know about the, the Subas, the Sukas, anything at all, go ahead and throw a comment below. I'll answer it as best I can, or I'll direct you to where you can find the answer to that question. Thanks, guys, so much. Um, stay tuned. There are some new things coming down the pipe for me. Um, as usual, I'm just doing books on top of books on top of books. What do I got here? Here's another, here's another Aved book that's got to go out. That's done. Here's another, yet another ED2 that needs to be mounted and that needs to get done. Uh, there's a freaking AOD around here somewhere, but phew, books all day long. But uh, on some level, I'm thinking it might be a pirate's life for me, finally. And uh, we might be uh, looking at how to make a Jack Sparrow wig as another upcoming video. If that's something you want to see, let me know in the comments below. And I'm not talking about those $3,000 ones, the $1,200 ones, $800 ones that people make. I'm going to show you how to get a pretty expensive looking wig for not a lot of money. And if that's something that sounds cool to you, throw a comment below and I'll be happy to do a tutorial. Otherwise, you just get to see the finished version because I'm not doing all the editing if you don't give a shit. <laughs> so thanks a lot, guys. Enjoy your weekend. Happy St. Patrick's Day or whatever the hell holiday it is this weekend. And I hope to see you guys later. Remember, if you can't build it, buy it. If you can't buy it, build it. But hey, man, sometimes to get exactly what you want, 
You got to do both. 